So eliminative materialism is a funny expression. And so it's got the two parts to it. One is materialism. And what materialism really means in this context is that from all we can tell at this stage, there is only the brain. That mental processes such as remembering and learning, finding something funny, feeling hungry, feeling dizzy, that these states that we're aware of are actually states of the physical brain itself. And so materialism really is the idea that all of what we think of as the mind is something that the brain does. Now, what about the eliminative part? Well, many years ago, Paul, my husband, Paul Churchland, had the idea that as neuroscience develops and as we discover more and more about the way the physical brain works, some of the psychological categories may not fit very well onto the things that we are discovering about the nature of the brain. Categories such as the will, where you might think of someone as having a weak will or someone as having a strong will. You might think of the will as a particular thing in the brain. Well, almost certainly that's not the case. Almost certainly there are a whole lot of areas of the brain that cooperate and integrate when decisions and choices are made. There probably is nothing which is the will itself. And in that sense, I guess you would say that the notion of the will could be eliminated, not from everyday speech, because we're probably going to continue to talk about those things, but from scientific speech. It's it was a prediction about the development of science. And it was really motivated by noticing things like this. That for a long time, people wondered about the fundamental elements. And it was widely believed that the fundamental elements that make all the stuff, the coffee and the chocolate and the butter and the fire and everything, consisted of earth, air, fire, and water. Well, by the 19th century, it was very clear that those things themselves were not fundamental, but were composed of many different kinds of things. So the notion of an element profoundly changed. And it profoundly changed because of some basic ideas by Mendeleev. And he realized that the more fundamental things were oxygen, aluminum, hydrogen, tin, gold. Those were the fundamental elements. And so in that sense, earth, air, fire, and water, you might say, got sort of heaved out or eliminated as the fundamental elements. So Paul was really motivated by the idea that although our current psychological categories can seem very useful to us, and indeed they are. As science progresses, we may find the fit between those categories and what we're learning about the brain is not a very good fit. What will happen then? It's hard to know. <laughs>